finally. <laughs> okay. Um, good evening, um, Chairwoman Lynch Prada and members of the committee. My name is Jacqueline Torres, and I am a former Section 8 voucher recipient. When I received my voucher, it was a blessing in disguise. I was a single parent with three young children living on a limited income and lack of resources. Section 8 allowed me a peace of mind by relieving me of some of the burden of the cost of living. Of course, it wasn't a smooth ride as I went through my um, search for apartment hunting. I remember there were some ads that I would see in the newspapers and they were clearly specified on the ad, no Section 8. That was frustrating to me. And, but of course, I did not give up. I knew I needed to keep looking for a, um, an apartment that was suitable for me and my children. As, as the only sole provider for my family, I worry less about covering my expenses because the subsidized rent allowed me to free up money that helped pay my other bills. Although I adjusted to this way of living as a voucher holder, I knew there was a missing source, and that was a higher education. After a few years raising my children, I decided that I wanted to pursue higher education. Having subsidized housing allowed me to free up money to pay for school and buy a reliable vehicle. When I think of Section 8 or a voucher holder, I think of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. He states we strive on five basic needs. Starting from the bottom up, we have physiological needs, safety needs, love and belongingness, esteem, and self-actualization. A housing, a housing voucher is the foundation that keeps a family together. If we can give people the opportunity to satisfy this first level of need, the rest will fall into place. And as a result, we create a healthy lifestyle and a better future for our families. Today, I am fortunate to say I have financial stability and live a better life. As a mentor and caseworker of the Family Self-Sufficiency Program, I see the struggle that Section 8 recipients face during the process of apartment hunting. Too many times, people are turned away simply because they are on Section 8. Many landlords have turned their backs on these clients simply because they can, making the search for an eligible apartment a nightmare for Section 8 clients. I feel the frustration because I have been there. People on Section 8 are not monsters. They are humans just like you and me. The only difference is that they are in a different income bracket. But nevertheless, that does not make them less worthy of the opportunity to maintain a safe and sanitary home. Hence, this program serves no purpose if a voucher recipient is unable to get housed. I believe that government programs are not meant to be forever, but they are essential for the transformation of achieving social change and personal growth. For this reason, I ask our legislatures to pass the source of income legislation that would prevent landlords from discriminating against Section 8. I say to the Rhode Island General Assembly, let us give hope and prevent people from becoming homeless. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions or comments for this witness?